Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be starting our Balrog painting by beginning with the base. So the Balrog is quite a big big uh, creature in the Middle Earth strategy battle game from Games Workshop. It's actually such a big model that I'm going to do this in two pieces. So I'm going to start by just doing the base. Now this model is a fantastic model and it was sent to me uh, by Michael Virtuoso, one of my all-time channel legends here. So I'm going to paint this up and we're going to do this in two pieces and hopefully I'm going to make this look really really cool for him as well and give him a, a, a really cool sort of different kind of video. So we're going to use some of these um, battlefield rocks so they're just small chip in bits of cork and what I'm going to do is using a little bit of super glue I'm going to put these in the uh, little recessed areas because what I'm going to do with this model instead of painting and gluing all of the flames to the base we're actually going to put some rocks on the base and create a more sort of uh, Moria themed sort of rocky kind of base instead so I'm not going to paint the uh, the flames on this we're going to make this a little bit more sort of I, I guess sort of grey dingy darker so that when we put the Balrog on top it's going to have this really nice contrast between a nice little bit of colour on the base and this really sort of extreme kind of uh, light light source on the Balrog. Now once I've glued this down I'm just going to give this a quick blast with a nice grey spray. So I tend to use a Rust-Oleum grey um, and I'm just going to give this a few little blasts just around to make sure that this is all covered in my nice grey primer and once that's done I'm going to use the uh, speed painter the army painter speed painter uh, speed paint sorry and we're going to use grave lord gray so this gray going over the top of the gray as you can see this is going to sit in all of those recess points giving us a nice dark effect uh, but also keeping and sticking to that gray tone so that's all I'm going to do is just cover the whole base in this and then I'm going to let this dry down and then we're going to use a few other different colours and tones and things like that to kind of build a little bit of character through mostly just washes. Because we're using rocks um, and sort of stone effects, we're going to kind of build this into a cool, nice looking, colourful sort of uh, base but also keep it quite cool and quite uh, stone-like and quite cold. So once the um, speed paint is dry, we're then going to use a burnt red just on the shield here of this um, sort of unfortunate creature that has taken a little bit of a, uh, a fall. So we're just going to paint around the inner part of the shield just like so. We're going to use this burnt red because we can always build the colour up should we want to or we can sort of uh, tone and change things from there. So it's good to have a nice dark base colour because then you can always build colours back up from there as well. So because this is sort of all of the base tones, you don't have to be too careful. And once that's done, I'm going to use one of my favorite colors, my Dark Rust 302. So if you uh, are a Citadel user, you could also use Dryad Bark. They're practically the same. And that's all I'm going to do is just paint this small wooden handle here. Um, I'm using my basin brush here, which is why uh, it's got a little bit of a split in it. Uh, so I would probably advise to just use your, um, your detail brush rather than your basin brush for this, just in case, because you don't want to get any of the brown on other parts. But as you can see, I'm being nice and careful, trying to keep everything nice and tight together. So yeah, we're just going to tie all of these colours together and then we're going to build up some more washes. So once that's dry, we're going to use Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter. This is a great, great base colour uh, for bones. This has a really sort of um, good kind of darker, darker sort of skeleton colour to it, which means that you can build up lighter cream tones on top then should you want to and when you need to. So this is a really great base colour. So as you can see, I'm just going to paint across this unfortunate sole here and we're going to paint across the skull and of course the rib cage here as well. Just trying to be careful not to get this all over the base. And once that's done, then we're going to use gunmetal, so a nice dark silver colour. And this is going to be painted all around uh, the silver area, so the axe here, and of course all around the helmet and the outer edge of the shield as well. So whereas we painted the inner side of the shield with the, uh, the red, we're going to paint the outer edge with the silver. So again, just trying to be careful not to get this on other parts of the base that we've already painted. Just going to take our time to really sort of cover those areas in this colour just like so. So this is going to be a really cool sort of build up process. When we put these base colours in and these base tones, it's not going to look like um, 
anything too advanced but as we start using the washes and the colors and the tones and things like that we're going to really build this up into a really gnarly sort of dark um kind of grimy um sort of uh, base it's going to be really cool so there's going to be a couple of cool techniques as well including the spider webs that i'll add a little bit later on but as i say just using the uh the detail brush just to get the silver around the edges of the shield so just try to be careful not to get the uh, silver onto the red bits that you've already painted again because these are base colors it doesn't matter too much because you could always fix that anyway once all of that's dry we're going to use strong tone so strong tone is a nice dark dark brown color and now i'm going to cover the whole base using this dark dark brown color and this is going to tie all of those colors together not only is it going to tie all of those colors together it's also going to bring a little bit of color and a little bit of life into these stones as well because the grave grave lord gray that we've paid, uh, placed on the rocks looks very flat so what we're going to do is we're just going to add this little brown color or this brownish texture to it that's going to tie the colors together and make it a little bit more earthy as well so this is going to make the the gray look a little bit more worn and a little bit more old and a little bit more uh, dark we're also going to use a military shader um, and with the military shader again i'm just going to cover over the um the skeleton here and i'm also going to cover over areas of the rock as well and again because this is a dark sort of green color this again is giving us a little bit more of an earth color earth color and tie in those tones together quite nicely as you can see we've got a few different tones and textures and colors now starting to emerge on the rocks and that's kind of what we're looking for we don't want everything to be really flat we want to use a few different colors and a few different tones just to build up a little bit more character and a little bit more uh, to look at with the base as well like i say we want this to be really gnarly and old and worn then i'm going to use a green tone so this is a nice green uh, sort of wash. As you can see, I'm applying these before the other washes are dry. And the reason for that is because I want these colors and textures to kind of dry into each other. I don't want to allow each layer to dry and then it darken up and darken up and darken up. Instead, I'm applying uh, these washes into each other so that this creates that tone, that character and that texture. So I'm adding a little bit of green into the military shader and the... Um, the, the, the strong tone as well so that this ties all of these colors together um, and when they dry down they're going to have these little elements of these colors as well we're also going to add a little bit of blue tone as well because we want these rocks to have this little bit of a blue sort of texture this kind of blue feel to them as well and avoiding where i've placed the green we're kind of placing this in random splodges here and there and again once all of this dries in then this is going to give us a little bit of different color textures and tones in the model and in the miniature as well now if you do place a little bit too much you can always just add a little bit of water and then manipulate and move the wash around as well so don't worry too much you can really see sort of where the blue and the green is uh, standing off on the top raised sort of area as well now once that's all dry although it doesn't look it it is dry i assure you it is just that it is a little bit sort of um it is dried down sort of glossy but that's cool because we're gonna uh, place a matte varnish over the top later anyway so don't worry too much so once that's all dry we're going to use a very very thin dry brush layer of stonewall gray now we're going to use this stonewall gray to uh, dry brush all of the stone but we're also going to do our best not to get this on the skeleton and onto the um sort of uh, onto the axe and little bits like that onto the details so we're going to try to dry brush just the stone and i've made this a little bit quicker because this dry brushing i like to dry brush with almost no paint on the brush and as you can see that allows me to slowly build the texture and tone and color back up um, it's always good to have less on your uh, brush because that allows you then to build up in layers instead of building it up in one big go and expect and seeing it to be too garish and too extreme so once the dry brushing is done, we're going to go to a carmine red. So as I said, with the red, using that burnt red tone to begin with and applying these washes, this is giving us a really cool sort of dark texture on this shield. So now we've got the option now to really build up and control where we want this texture and where we want this color to be. So we're going to use this carmine red and I mixed a bit of water with this so that this becomes a little bit more like a glaze. And then I'm just using a stippling effect. And the reason why I am using a stippling effect on this particular um, 
part of the model is purely because we want this shield to look a little bit more battered, a little bit more worn and a little bit more sort of uh, rough. And by using this stippling effect, that's going to apply the paint in the sort of different areas. So it's going to have different consistencies, di different thicknesses. And that's going to allow you to control how much contrast and how much uh, red tone and color you want to build through these areas. Now, once the carmine red is dry, we're then going to use a red ink from Vallejo as well. So doing the same thing, as you can see, just using that stippling effect, trying to build up the tone and texture. And what I'm doing is and building the highlight on more of the left side of the shield, leaving the right side of the shield to stay a little bit darker. So I'm in complete control of where I want that contrast to be. And the cool thing is, again, with these washes, um, uh, sorry, with these inks, you can get really, really um, sort of controlling and you can build it up in layers so you can put two three four layers in and really build that vibrancy through and you can see where that red is dried now just how cool that effect is going from that lighter side to the the darker side in such a quick and simple way now once that's done then we're going to use a Vallejo skeleton bone um, no we're going to use a Vallejo bone white I do apologize. This is going to go over the top of the army painter skeleton bone. And this is going to be that nice cream highlight that I was talking about with the skeleton. So this is really going to allow the bone to stand out and, and look a lot more vibrant. Once that's done then, I'm going to use a rust effect. So for this, I'm using a AK Interactive Crusted Rust Deposits, which is a mouthful, uh, using the Medium Rust Deposits color. And that's all I'm doing, using my basin brush. So using one of my brushes that's a little bit more gnarly and a little bit more sort of worn. I'm just going to dab this. So again, using that um, stippling effect, I'm just going to dab this around areas that I want the rust to look. So just around the axe, around the edges and areas of the shield, and of course across the helmet as well. And I'm just using this dabbing stippling effect and then sometimes if there's a little bit too much in the area that I want I'm just gonna use my thumb to just wipe a little bit off as well then once that's done we're going to uh, just quickly paint up the um, the handle here using this nice brown tone and we're just going to use the the detail brush just to build up some of the uh, the sort of wood grain just kind of following along the area that the handle is going just leaving if we need a little bit of the underlying darker tone creating that wood um, that sort of woody effect as well that wood grain effect once that's done, I'm just going to use a nice layer of black and I'm just going to paint this all the way around the outside. And again, with this, this is a personal choice. I like to use black, but I know a lot of people like to use other colors too. So for me and this particular base, I'm going to paint right the way around using black. I'm just going to be careful now not to get this on any of the stone that we've done, but while trying to paint this just into those creases and cracks so that it builds that character and texture just like so and for the cobwebs we're going to make this super easy that's all this is is a quick cotton wool bud and that's all you do is use in your cotton wool bud you just peel and pull a little bit of the cotton wool out so that it gives you control as to how much you want and using mod podge which is pretty much just um PVA glue and water. This is a matte effect Mod Podge, which is fantastic because this means when we place this on a model, it's going to dry down into a matte effect as well. And then it's just about choosing where you want your cobwebs to be. Now that looks pretty cool. So that's where I'm going to place my first cobweb. And this is what we're going to do, which is going to apply a little bit of uh, Mod Podge onto the uh, cobwebs and just stick them down and control where we want them. Now, if you cover the whole thing in Mod Podge, it turns into a sort of wet um, sort of uh, spider web, this really sort of gnarly looking cobweb. Um, and just like so, you can see I'm just placing a little bit of this Mod Podge and just trying to manipulate with the brush where this sticks. And there we go, look at that. It's so, so simple, but such a great great effect and the cool thing is because the cotton wool bud will stick to where the glue is this means that you can really manipulate it with the brush you can see that i'm controlling where i want the cobwebs to go just like so such a cool effect such a simple effect as well but it looks fantastic on the model so just to show you again we'll place another bit just across over the axe here and again we're just going to try to place where we want it to be but it's going to stick to my thumb of course it is 
and then we're just going to use a little bit of the Mod Podge, a little bit of the glue then, just to glue this down. So as you can see, we're just going to place this chest in there, just so that that gives us an area that we can kind of control the, um, the cotton wool from, just like so. And there you go, there you go, just like so. So we're just going to place this and manipulate this and move this across using the, the, the glue just like so. And look at that, such a quick and simple, great looking effect. So if you want to paint really old gnarly bases, that's it. So that is the first part all done. That is as simple as that. So we've made a really cool gnarly base that really does suit the Balrog. Um, I hope you guys like this. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is a cool base and if you like it. Let me know if you think that it's cool without the flames. Uh, and we will be moving on to painting the Balrog and making the video as soon as I can. But like I say, let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you. I do my very best to get back to everyone. And there's just a little quick look of the Balrog himself. It's going to be fantastic. This is going to be such a cool, such a cool model to have on the channel painted up. I really, really, really cannot wait. Cannot wait. I'm super excited. So thank you uh, for all that you guys do. I really appreciate it. And of course, massive thank you to Michael Virtuoso for sending this out because this is going to be fantastic. So as always, my friends, please take care of yourselves and I'll see you for part two.